I thought that today we would do something that I, I, I had in mind for a while, but I never really got around to doing. And now I have a reasonable lineup of pens that I can do this with. So what I wanted to do today was let's look at three pens from the same brand in three different price classes. So I'm only going to hold them up briefly and then I'll tilt the camera down so we can have a look, a better look at each pen. Here we have three pens by Visconti. These are all original Viscontis and I want to quickly discuss the price differences and also what you get for those different prices. Now, many different pen brands will have pens in different price ranges, even, even a, a, an older brand, older as in has been around for a long time, like Waterman, has pens in different price classes, which uh, I, I would say started about 20 euros in Europe and some of them are a thousand euros. So th that's quite a big range. Of course, what I'm going to discuss here today will not translate one on one to every pen brand because this is a very specific pen brand. In one, in one of these pens has a very specific filling system. <clears throat> However, I do think that there are some principles that may apply to different brands. So that's what I, that's why I want to do this video because I get a lot of questions about this. Like, what's the difference between a hundred dollar pen and a thousand dollar pen? Well, they're right here. So let's talk about them. Let's do that now. Okay, so here we go. Three pens from the same brand. And right there, that was quickly a Lamy Safari as a size comparison. Okay, so you can see that the Visconti Breeze is about the same size as the Safari, and from that point on, they go up in size, right, to quite a bit for the Speak Easy. So, what do we have here? We have a Visconti Breeze, a Visconti Opera Master, and a <clears throat> um, Visconti Speak Easy. Okay. So, differences between the pens. Well, there definitely are differences. First of all, the Opera Master and the Speakeasy were limited editions. The Breeze is not. Okay. Now, what, what about the pricing? A Breeze uh, will set you back about $90. You may be able to find it a little cheaper, street price, etc. But about $90, I would say. The Speakeasy, uh, if I remember correctly, was about seven ninety-five, so close to eight hundred US, and then the Speakeasy was eleven hundred US. So you go up significantly in price, right? Um, but what what is the difference, and what do you really get for that? Because limited. Yeah, that's cute. I personally don't really care whether a pen is limited or not. I care about whether I like the pen, but that's just me. What are some of the differences that you could expect? Well, first of all, there's an obvious difference, which is that in size, okay? But it is not at all said that the more expensive the pens get, the bigger they get. I mean, at some point, there's a physical limit. There are also very expensive pens that are not that big. I have found that often, as the price goes up, you're looking at a slightly more oversized pen. But there is not a linear relationship between price and size. So what differences do you get? Well, there is the material. Um, this, for example, is a celluloid. And this is plastic. So there is that, that difference. It feels a little different. A lot of pen lovers like celluloid. I think a good acrylic. CF, yes, uh, can also be very stunning. But, sure. Celluloid is nice. What other differences are there? The whole fit and finish is something you'll notice. So, for example, on this Visconti Breeze, this clip, pretty much the same clip you find on all Visconti pens with the nice arch, the, the Ponte Vecchio in Florence, this is filled in with a laser engraving. Okay? On the original Visconti models, especially the slightly more expensive ones, that was filled in with enamel. So there is a difference there, right? Enamel versus laser engraving. And Speakeasy has enamel as well. Second thing, the nib. The nib is of course a big difference, right? Now the, uh, the, the Opera Master was made in a time when Visconti still did a lot of gold nibs. They are starting doing that again now. But there's a few differences here. First of all, the Breeze has a steel nib. Secondly, the Breeze has a number 5 nib. The Opera Master 
has a number 6 nib, bigger, and it is 18 karat gold. The Speakeasy has one of the palladium nibs, but it is also a number 6 nib. Okay, so there's a difference there. And yes, I know, I know that's a big gap there. Yes, I know that. Thank you. So there is that. So now we have fit and finish, material, nib. What else? Well, sometimes, and this will not translate perfectly to uh, every pen manufacturer, but typically something changes in the filling system when you go up a little bit in price. Not always. There are very expensive pens that are cartridge converter filled pens. CF, Classic Pens LB5, 1850 US, cartridge converter, all right? But what about these pens? Well, in, this pen, in these pens you see that too. The Breeze is a cartridge converter filled pen, all right? Cartridge converter. And for the record, there's nothing wrong with that. Very easy to clean, for example. But a lot of, I think, pen lovers kind of expect something a bit more fancy for a more expensive pen. The Opera Master has a, a double reservoir power filter system. So you unscrew this bit. I'm not going to do it now because there's ink in here. There's a piston. You draw this out. You put in the bottle of ink. You push this back in. It creates a vacuum and it sucks up ink. It has a big capacity and it's also... Uh, it, it's, it's fun. It's kind of a fun system. And it is a bit fancier than just a cartridge converter. The Speakeasy is very special in this regard um, because very disappointingly, the Speakeasy is massive, and then under the hood, it's very small. Um, this happens occasionally in real life, so I've been told. But the reality of the matter is, the Speakeasy is a special pen. It's a special pen because the whole theme is Speakeasy, okay? So, uh, a hidden uh, place to drink alcohol, and the Speakeasy has an alcohol compartment. But the downside of an alcohol compartment is it takes up a lot of space, which means that there isn't a lot of space for a filling system. Now, the Speakeasy is a slightly modified version of the Saint Basil. And the Saint Basil looks exactly like this, except for gold trim, same material, same shape, same size, same pen, and it has, <clears throat> I think, a vermeil or a gold overlay of the St. Basil Cathedral. <clears throat> Excuse me. That pen is a power filler, so it does have the same filling system as the Opera Master. So those, I would say, are the biggest differences. Now, what really matters to me is, what about the writing experience? And that, I think, is something we should definitely take a quick look at. So, side by side, let's do this. Let's start with the breeze. Visconti breeze. The nib is, uh, this is a, this is two dots. That's Visconti's new fancy system. There's two circles on there, that means it's medium. And the ink is SBRE Brown. This is rather a feedbacky nib. Not the world's smoothest. Not the worst I've ever used either. But as you can see, it does do what it's supposed to do, and it doesn't run dry when I write with it pretty quickly. <clears throat> what about the Visconti Opera Master? Well, this one is a slightly complicated story, because this broad 18K nib actually didn't write so well. So this is tuned by Mike Masayama, the O-sensei, um, the nibmeister. And that mean, may, means that this is not a fair comparison in writing. I mean, when a professional tunes up a nib for you, then clearly it's not a fair comparison. So, suffice to say that this nib barely wrote when I got it, which is uncommon for the Visconti 18K nibs, but it really wrote it very easily, and it was very dry, it didn't work well. Mike has fixed that. Um, but the result, of course, is a not so fair comparison. 
So what I'm focusing on is the writing experience. The disadvantage to some people of the opera master with all the metal parts, and I'll show you what I mean when I'm done writing, there are opera masters that are all uh, acrylic or whatever Visconti called it, acryloid or something, I, I, I forget. They have a turning cap in the same material and a section in the same material. Those are very pretty. Those are much lighter. These pens are very heavy. I think I seem to recall something like 50, 60 grams. They are heavy when they're inked up. Uh, so it's not necessarily for everyone. So the writing experience there is a bit different. Now, for me, it also feels like a really solid pen because of the weight. And that makes it feel very different from the considerably less, sorry, less expensive Breeze, which feels plasticky, very light. Um, an Opera Master does have a different feeling to it. That is absolutely true. Then we have our final player, uh, which is the Speakeasy. which has a slightly finicky nib that I always need to get fixed and never do. Um, this is a palladium nib and it's a stub. It's a very odd one. It's very wet. This is not the nib that came on the pen by the way, but I do really like this nib even though it is a bit finicky. Nice skip there. Now, one thing that you notice here, <coughs> beyond the obvious writing experience, which again is a bit, I know this nib needs a, a good tune up, but <coughs> this pen is massive. It's huge. And for many people, I have found this is uncomfortable and they don't like this anymore. It's too much. I love it. <coughs> but, yes, it is a special pen. Okay, so. It also, because the celluloid, it feels very nice, and that is something that I, I really do enjoy. So, there is that. I have tried... <coughs> sorry. I have tried to give you an overview of these three pens, and I've tried to point out some of the differences you can expect between pens of very different price classes, right? Again, this will not translate one-on-one -on -one to other brands. The power filler is a Visconti thing, so you won't really feel that, find that on many other brands. But going up in fit and finish, going up in material, going up in nib material, going up in nib size, as in number 5 to number 6 to maybe number 8, uh, maybe going up in limited editions, or <clears throat> these kinds of things, I think, all make up the differences in pricing between different pens. Okay. Hope this was useful, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.